Online. I'm Natasha Spencer. Today's top stories. Cabinet Minister Absolutely under fire. I'm a Liberal Democrat, I'm not a Conservative, I have a very distinct agenda. Landslide victory. Students celebrate. Care services slashed. And in sport, rugby legends play underdog locals. Protesters from Unite the Union came out in force to question Vince Cable's position as a Liberal Democrat in the coalition government and to spoil his visit to Hampshire. Demonstrators heckled the business secretary over public sector cuts to over 500 local jobs as he arrived at Portsmouth Port to open a new passenger terminal. Let's get rid of the Tory government, let's get rid of this coalition and let's get back to a society that we believe in. With the Conservative and Liberal Democrat partnership in its second year of operation, Cable says he is committed to his party. Well, there was a handful of protesters and, you know, we counted them around the country. I'm perfectly happy to have a debate with them. I mean, they know perfectly well. I mean, the, the comments I make, you know, absolutely clear. I'm a Liberal Democrat. I'm not a Conservative. I have a very distinct agenda. I mean, grown-up politics mean that people with different parties, different approaches, work together in the national interest. As the protesters remain locked outside the terminal by police, one local Hampshire MP declared that he will not always side with the coalition. Whilst we're in a coalition, that doesn't mean to say you have to accept everything and I think what you'll see from now on people like myself for a long period of time I'd voted more against the government than I'd voted for it and I will continue to take a very much an independent view. While Mr Cable left the building via the back door union activists have warned that they will continue to oppose government cuts across Hampshire. Stuart Appleby Winchester News Online. University tuition increases affecting future students as have plenty of media coverage, but do students of today understand the debt they will face after they complete their courses? A new graduate owing £20,000 will need to earn over £18,000 a year just to stop their debt from continuing to grow if they make the standard repayments. Andrew Giddings has been asking students how much they know about their debts. You don't like to see uh, anything about interest payments, it's, it's all quite wordy. Do you know that you're actually accruing interest now on your loan? No. No, I, no, I had no idea that. No, they, they seem to keep that one quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really know. I didn't really think about it. Do you know what your interest rate is no. on the student loan? Did you know that you were paying interest? No, I didn't. Well, Andrew joins us in the studio now to help clear up what seem to be some pretty muddy waters. Andrew, why do students know so little about student debts? Hi, Natasha. Uh, the problem seems to be that for a lot of students, um, they're very excited about starting university, so things like uh, repayments and interest rates aren't really at the front of their minds. It's not necessarily something they take into consideration, um, and they don't ever seem to think about it while they're actually at university. So why is this a problem? Well, uh, the problem is that there's nothing wrong with being in debt, but as long as you can actually monitor and control that debt. That's something that you can't do if you don't know how much you owe or what your interest payments are going to be or how you can pay it back. Now the student finance company does actually put that information out there but maybe it should be a little bit more obvious. So what is it that students really need to know about their loans? Well, if you have a student loan today, it's actually grown by 1.5%, even if you're still at university or if you've left university and haven't started paying your loan back yet. And this is the thing. You can continue on after university. You can continue working for, for many years if you want to be without earning 15000 You never have to pay the money back, but your debt will continue to grow. And what can students expect to see on their pay slips and their bank hit statements when they start to work? Well, you pay back 9% of anything that you earn over £15,000. So somebody earning £18,000 a year will pay back £270 every year. But that's a bit of a problem because if you have a £20,000 debt, your interest payments actually work out at £300 a year. So at that rate, you'd never actually pay off your interest, let alone start to pay off your debt. And if you think that's bad now, then think of how it's going to be for the students in 2012 and beyond who are paying eight or £9,000 a year for their tuition fees. Definitely. So um, how can students get around this then? Well, one thing that you can do simply is earn more money um, and you then uh, be paying your, off your debt at a faster rate. But of course, not everyone has a choice in that matter. So the next thing you can do is contact student finance and ask them to take money out of your bank account faster. You can do things like set up direct debits with them and they'll keep you up to date on what you owe. Um, but of course, if you want to, you can just keep the money in the bank, uh, pay it off at the minimum rate. And when 25 years is up, your debt will be cleared altogether. Makes you wonder what will happen when the fees increase. Thanks very much, Andy.
This week saw the end of a consultation period deciding the future of Hampshire's adult service care. This follows the announcement of widespread cuts earlier this year. Campaigners were at the County Council headquarters to persuade councillors to decide in their favour. Sam Homewood saw the events unfold. <laughs> This week is the end of the consultation period that Hampshire County Councillors use to decide what will happen in regard to the future of adult service care. In February they announced that nearly £25 million will be cut from the budget. They can dress it up as they like, they can do consultations which we all know are going to just be another sham. This is about cuts, nothing more and nothing less. And this is asset stripping, Tory asset stripping. Self-directed support will allow people to have the services and activities they really want and that are relevant to them. It is an initiative that has the potential to change so many people's lives. The Guardian newspaper has published its latest university league tables and it's great news for Winchester. The university has risen 27 places overall and scored highly in the teaching effectiveness category. Kieran Brannigan tells us more. Winchester University has rocketed up the University League tables and although the University has not quite reached Champions League status yet, it appears a push is being made for the top half of the table. The yearly study, published by The Guardian, now sees Winchester in 69th place, a massive rise from 96th last year. Some subjects scored particularly highly, sport makes a bid for promotion in 25th and teaching is a very respectable 11th. The University now plans to build on this success with a £5.6 million teaching centre to be built on the site of the old arts building behind me. And now we've got Sam Hover in the studio to give us a rundown of this week's sport. After gaining promotion last year, Winchester's American football team are preparing for another long season. Michael Connolly touched down at the training ground to profile the Hampshire Thrashers. American football has grown in stature in the UK since the coverage of the NFL started in the 80s. Winner have come down to Winchester Rugby Club to see what happens behind the scenes at the Hampshire Thrashers. So we have two training sessions normally in, any, in one week, so Wednesday evening, sense of fitness, agility, things like that. And then on Sunday um, we start at 12 o'clock for a practice session, so that's about three, three and a half hours practice. And then a game day, we normally get here slightly earlier than that, ready kitted at about 12 o'clock for warm-ups and the game starts at half past two in the afternoon. Previously the Andover Thrashers, the club moved to North Walls Park in Winchester and have had some recent success under head coach Tyron Lindsay. Uh, we lost one game regular season, so we went 8-1 and one regular season uh, and then we lost our second playoff game to the London Olympians. Um, we got promoted this year, uh, it's, a lot of a, it's a much tougher schedule but I think we'll hopefully come up with a winning, winning schedule. With the season still in its early stages, the Thrashers will look to impress in their first season in their new league. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. Now to football. Non-league players and friends of young stuntman Jay Young turned out at the Testwood Stadium in a fundraising event for his recovery. The 22-year-old from Southampton was left paralysed the, from the neck down after he landed on his head during a routine stunt at Legoland Windsor. The game between a Totten 11 and a Brockenhurst 11 ended 3-3 with Sholing midfielder Nick Watts and Winchester City goalkeeper Rory Anderson both on the score sheet. Brockenhurst won the match on penalties. £2,431.13 was raised. And lastly, a charity rugby match saw some of the greats of the game making a trip to the Isle of Wight at the weekend. David Champion witnessed the action. Saturday the 14th of May saw Isle of Wight based Venter Rugby Club veterans take on the London Wasps legends in aid of charity. The game saw Ventnor score the first points with this Glen Hepburn penalty. But all it seemed to do was rattle the Wasps nest. They struck back with tries which showcased the truly world class calibre of their lineup. The Wasps ended up winning comfortably but the game was played in great spirits and raised over £8,000 for charity. Great cause, the Injured Players Foundation is a rugby football union uh, charitable trust which uh, strives to raise funds for players who've uh, received injuries 
whilst participating in rugby football union games. It's been fantastic. I think it's, uh, there's a couple of thousand people coming up to a local rugby club. This is what rugby to me is all about. It's fun, uh, you know, it's a good free flow rugby today and it's about a community. It's been brilliant. I mean, I've got to say, a great crowd of people great cause and a good charity and we've raised some good money for them so I think it's really important for that. The boys have all enjoyed it and they're just enjoying them a couple of beers now so I'm looking forward to a couple of beers and enjoy the rest of the night. Amazing, amazing turnout. Really well supported. Um, the sun was shining. What more can you ask for really? It's, uh, uh, refereed well, played in the right spirit um, and you know what's most important we're raising good money for charity and it was a lovely day lovely day david champion for winchester news online and that's all the sport for this week so back to natasha thanks sam and that's all from winnell this week but for more award-winning news and sport don't forget to log on to our website at winnell.co.uk from all of us here goodbye Can you imagine spending 20 years of your life in prison for a crime you didn't commit? Neither could I until I got the opportunity to portray Betty Ann Waters in the film Conviction, telling the real story of how she freed her brother Kenny. Sadly, what happened to Kenny happens far more often than you might expect, but together we can stop it. Please join me in helping the Innocence Project fight injustice. Go to innocenceproject.org to make a donation and get involved. Hello, I'm Cara Lathwaite and this is What's On in Winchester. In this week's show, I'm going to be letting you know about the surprises that are in store for you upon Winchester High Street very soon. And later on, I'm going to be checking out your summer ball. But first... If you fancy a walk on the wild side, then Marvel Zoo is the place for you because they are holding a fundraising run in aid of conservation. If saving cute fluffy wild animals wasn't enough, you'll also receive a medal for your efforts and all sorts of goodies. Entrance is free for those taking part and it's discounted for your supporters. If you go down to the high street anytime soon, you may be in for a surprise, and I'm not talking bears having a picnic. I'm talking troops of people who will be spontaneously breaking out into dance at any given opportunity along Winchester High Street. Of course, admission is free, they're doing it for the fun of it. So keep your eyes peeled, because you never know what's just around the corner. Last but not least, of course, Summer Ball is fast approaching, as I'm sure you're all aware, which is why I took it upon myself to track down someone who knows exactly what's going down this Friday. I've managed to track down Jez, who works here at the vault, so knows everything that you are dying to know about this year's Summer Ball. Are you willing to give up any of the secrets? Uh, yeah, this one's Summer Ball. Uh, it's going to be all festival themed, so get everyone ready for the summer. Uh, level one's going to be, the stage going to look like... Glassbury stage, all the white stage, wedding stage. Good, so it's going to be very outdoorsy, very hot, very nice, yes. very summery. Perfect. Definitely. Well, tickets are still on sale, so make sure you're there because it will be sizzling, I promise. Well, that's been all from me here this week, but of course, make sure you stay tuned because true to form, I will be back next week. This has been Cara Lathwaite for What's On in Winchester.